Hi there, this is Bibi Cameron here, and today I have a super cool three-dimensional project to share with you. I'm going to be making this super cool and adorable paper coffee cups using the new designer choice die of the month by Tonic Studios. Here is the die set. It comes in this envelope. It includes 16 dies and also instructions. I place all the dies on this magnetic sheet to show you the die set a lot better. So here in the left, we have the dies that will cut the body of the box. Two of them are essential, and this one here is decorative. Here, on the center of this sheet, I have four dies that will cut the pieces to create the lid of the box. And in this corner here, I have four dies, two of them will cut two different sentiments. This one here will cut the backing piece for those sentiments. And this other die here will cut the heat sleeve that we are going to wrap around the cup. We also have five circular dies here. Two of them will cut solid background pieces. And these three here are going to emboss and partially cut the paper. So all you have to do is to die cut a solid piece of paper, a light mirror cardstock to do this, and then run this die over that piece of paper on your die cutting machine so that you get a piece like this one. It's absolutely beautiful. And this can be used to decorate your box as a topper or also to make little tags for this box or for any other project. Without further ado, I'm going to start putting this box together. And I'm going to start by putting together the body of the box. I need four pieces. I might use that octagonal piece there, or I might not. I'm going to use double-sided tape to adhere on the flaps of all these pieces here, and I'm going to fold the paper like so. I'm only going to fold the paper using my hands because I'm using pearlescent cardstock. If you use another cardstock, you can use a scoring tool to burnish the scoring lines. Okay, the only thing that is important here is to make sure that the scoring lines at the top of these pieces and at the bottom are aligned so that we are going to get a piece like this. Next, we are going to need two of these small octagons and I'm going to start by gluing one of them inside the box. This is going to give shape to the bottom of the box and it's going to do the things a lot easier from here. Once I glue that piece in place, I can adhere the bottom piece. And as simple as that, we have created the body of the box or the base of the box. Okay, to make the lid, we are going to need 11 die cuts. And we are going to die cut an octagonal frame using this die here. You will find easily the different dies that you are going to need to die cut different parts of, for this box. So I need two of those, four of those, and four of these ones. Okay, first I'm going to grab these four pieces. I'm going to identify the flap on each of these pieces, and I'm going to add glue or double-sided tape on those flaps. Next, I'm going to adhere these pieces together to form an octagon. Pass over the back of this piece a card creaser or a bone folder to make sure that this is perfectly adhered together. We are going to start shaping this up by folding the paper like so. And then we have to fold the tiny square flaps at the sides of this piece. The next we need to do is to adhere those tiny flaps to the following panel. And to do that, I'm just going to use liquid glue and I'm going to hold with my fingers for 10 seconds each of these flaps just like this. Take your time to make sure that this is properly done. And all we have to do next is to fold these last flaps 
towards the inside of this piece and glue them in place. You can also use double-sided tape if you wish. So once we are sure that these pieces are perfectly adhered in place, our shape is going to look like this. Now we are going to use these two octagons here. They have a little hole that you can align with any of the holes on that piece there. And all you have to do is to make sure that this is aligned with the edge of that octagon. So that's the top. And in the inside, we are also going to add a lining piece to cover this up and to make it look pretty. So once we have done this, that part of the lid is done. Now let's put together this other piece that is also part of the lid of this box. All we have to do is to identify that tiny square flap at the sides of these panels and we are going to adhere all these pieces together like I'm showing here. We just need to make sure that these scoring lines here and there are aligned and also pressing down the paper for a few seconds to make sure that this is perfectly adhered in place. The next thing we are going to do is to fold up these flaps in the inner circle of this shape, just like that. And then the other two scoring lines in this piece are going to be folded to the inside of the piece. You will see that clearly in a moment. So we just fold the paper like so and start shaping this other part of the lid. There are tiny mini flaps, triangular mini flaps here. There are four of them. And we have also four tiny mini square flaps at the top of this piece. We have to fold all those over the scoring lines. And the next we are going to do is to seal this piece together or to glue this octagonal piece together. Remember, we are working with octagons. So this is also an octagon. So I'm holding this here to make sure that that piece is not going to fall apart. Once this is adhered in place, I'm going to find the tiny mini flaps at the top of this piece and I'm going to add glue over them. You will notice that they have a special shape that is going to help you to shape those corners to create that octagon. While I do this, two things are happening. One is that I'm holding this really tight to guarantee the bond of the paper in that area there. And the second one is that the glue on the other flaps is drying up. So when I put the other pieces together, the gluing process is going to be a lot quicker. And I'm not spinning the camera here because I want to make sure you understand that I take my time to adhere the pieces in place. Once this is done or the top flaps are in place, I'm going to adhere the bottom flaps of this piece here. And you will see me holding the paper, moving the paper here and there, and making sure that I'm getting the shape of this octagon right. I double check that I didn't leave any flap loose. And if I did, I just fix that in this moment, like this little flap here that I didn't glue for some reason, then I have the chance to do it in this moment. I'm almost finished with this piece here. I'm going to use now this frame octagon here that is not only decorative. This piece is going to stabilize the lid and I found it essential. There are many ways to assemble this box or order to assemble pieces, but I found that this was the best way to show you how to do it. I made four cups and you know, every time I made a new one, I got better at it. So it has everything, you might need a little bit of practice. Once you have this pretty shape here, all you have to do is to add glue to these top flaps 
If you have a very strong double-sided adhesive tape, you can add that tape there. So you see what I did there. And next we are going to join these two pieces together like so. So we are going to push the paper towards that adhesive side to give shape to this lid. And the lid for this coffee cup is done. So there you go, the lid, this is going to look like this. And for the cup, here at the top, it's looking very rough and not finished. So you can die cut a octagonal frame and glue it over. I'm going to skip that step for this cup. I'm just going to place the lid just there to show you how this go together. And of course, you can also add a straw. You can buy straws from the shop that coordinates with your project. In this case, I don't have one that coordinates. So I made my own straws. And you can see here that I also added that octagonal frame at the top of the cup, and that looks a lot better. For this piece here, I'm not going to add that at the top because I have a plan for this. It's a different plan. If you put the lid of this in place and you rotate this, this piece facing down, it looks like a stand for something. You put something on here, you can start getting really creative. I made this little angel using tonic dyes, and this can be a gift box or just an ornament that you can hang on your tree or from a wreath. I use mermaid dyes for some of the embellishments I use for this angel. And I didn't want this video to be super long, as I just want to show you how to assemble the box. But you know me, I can't resist to give you extra ideas and this angel is super cute and it's super easy to make. And if you want to cover that hole at the bottom, all you have to do is to use an octagonal die cut shape and that's it. So I made five cups. Four of them were decorated differently using different dies in the set. And I also used one to make the angel. And of course, I also wanted to show you that you can customize these beautiful coffee cups for many different occasions and for people at any age. Last but not least, I want to show you how to make the heat sleeve for this cup. And because I'm using black cardstock, I'm also using my Tonic Studios white mat. So all we have to do is to die cut four pieces, add glue over the flaps of those pieces and just glue one after the other one. Once this is done, we are going to fold the paper over the scoring lines, like so, and to give three-dimensional shape to this part, all we have to do is to add glue on the last flap on that shape there and put this piece together like so. Now the slip is done and all we have to do is to add a sentiment over the slip if you want to. There are five dies in the set that will create different sentiments. And those little circular dies that I showed you at the beginning of the video will create decorative elements that can be used as a topper for your boxes, or you can also use them to make little tags. I made little tags for all the boxes today. I think they look super cute. And you can use many different cards of colors or paper to make these boxes. For the lid of this cup, I won't advise to use paper thicker than 240 grams. The thinner, the better, and the easier to fold and to glue together. This cup measures four inches and a half tall by three inches and a half width, and at the bottom, they measures one inch and a half. So they are the size of a real standard coffee cup. They will even fit perfectly on a standard coffee cup trays. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to this channel or visit the blog for more ideas and inspiration. The supply list and the link to the blog and shop are in the video description. Thank you very much for watching and happy crafting. Bye.